Hello, everyone, and welcome. Huge thank you to Will Bodie for helping with all of the logistics on this presentation um, and getting this going. So welcome to uh, PE Teachers and Principals, how understanding occupational socialization can support the implementation of a quality PE program. I am your presenter today. My name is Sarah Heidel. Uh, I teach seventh and eighth grade. I'm just gonna shrink my little picture here for a moment. Um, seventh and eighth grade physical education and seventh grade AVID. I teach at Martin Luther King Jr. Technology Academy in Sacramento, California. Um, this year is my third year teaching, but I've been working with youth for over 15 years um, as volunteering when I was younger. I coached track and field for 10 years and I was an after school programming practitioner at multiple levels um, with a nonprofit agency. Um, so my passion is definitely in education. Um, my bachelor's degree is in kinesiology, physical education from Sacramento State. Uh, my master's is in leadership for social justice from St. Mary's College of California. And I'm currently working on my doctorate. Um, so I'm working on my educational leadership and administration doctorate from Drexel University, um, which is what this, uh, my dissertation is, is what you are watching. This is the preliminary work of my dissertation research that I wanted to start sharing. Uh, my credential is in physical education, um, and I have supplemental authorizations in health science and in English. But I want to know a little bit about you. Um, I don't want to make the assumption that we're all PE teachers, so let me know in the chat. Where do you teach? What level? What subject? If there's administrators I definitely or superintendents, I definitely want to know if you're here as well. So go ahead and type in the chat. I'm actually pre-recording this right now, and I'm active in the chat right now, so um, I will be interacting with you through this presentation. All right, so in this session, I just wanted to put the session description here. So we're gonna look at occupational socialization research um, where that's really showed that PE teachers genuinely teach the way that we were taught. And in my research, I wanted to see what kind of a connection there was for administrators and how they provide leadership to PE. Uh, do they measure their PE programs by the same standards they experienced? Um, or not. And um, I'm going to unpack some of the preliminary findings from my research and give you some recommendations for developing high quality PE programs. So a little bit of background. I'm just going to go ahead and move my picture over here. Um, despite its longevity in the curriculum, we know that PE has suffered from some marginalization. Um, there have been spending cuts, time cuts, money cuts, um, some argue that physical education really suffers from a lack of definite purpose. If you hang out on Twitter, um, you'll see conversations there around this topic all the time that we, are we health focused? Are we uh, skill focused? Are we sport focused? And as a field, all of that kind of comes together in creating a, an opportunity for marginalization because we're lacking kind of a unified purpose. Um, we know that in California um, specifically, but all around the nation, the federal No Child Left Behind Back was, Act was not a friend to PE um, and definitely contributed to a lot of cuts. Um, and we have a perceived low academic value. So in looking at occupational socialization theory, which is also referred to as teacher socialization theory, um, it has been a widely used research theory in PE education. So it's a great theory to start looking through or looking at the principal and their experiences. And what they found is that acculturation, which is the first phase of occupational socialization, and we'll talk more about that as we go, um, it has a profound impact on PE teachers. We teach the way that we were taught. So if we experienced a high quality program, we teach a high quality program. If we did not, we generally will utilize some of those same practices that we experienced as youth. So in this study, um, we looked a little bit at, I wanted to look at uh, the problem around that little is known about how PE related acculturation experiences of principals influence their leadership. The logic here is that principals have classroom experience as teachers, okay? And they also are a product of our K-12 education system. So if a PE teacher is um, a, a product of their environment, then 
isn't a principle as well. And that's what we're looking for here. So much research has established that acculturation has a profound impact on the PE teacher's pedagogy and that principles also have classroom experience as teachers and as youth. So it is safe to infer that the principles of acculturation has an impact on their leadership practices. The purpose of this study is to examine the influence of acculturation on the principal's perceptions and leadership perceptions of and their leadership of the PE program. So what we're looking for is a potential missing link for sustainably increasing the quality of physical education programs. And that missing link potentially could be the principal um, really equipping them to lead in a different way. Um, the intent is to provide school leaders with an understanding of how their personal experiences impact their leadership of a marginalized subject. So we want to increase that self-awareness and move from marginalizing PE to increasing the quality of PE and have some really specific tools in order to do that. Digging in a little bit more into the significance, um, there are very limited studies that have investigated the socialization process of principals in general. Um, there's even fewer that have looked at the um, the acculturation experiences and principal leadership. In fact, there's one, and I want to um, give a shout out to Dr. George and Dr. Kurtner Smith. Um, Dr. Kurtner Smith uh, was willing to talk with me on the phone about his research, and um, the tools that I've developed in this research are really influenced by the research that Dr. George and Dr. Kurtner Smith conducted. Um, second significant point is that principals we know hold a significant um, they, they play a significant role in controlling the factors that lead to marginalization. They're in charge of funding, they're in charge of space, they're in charge of scheduling, and all of those things have an impact on PE. Um, third is that schools are systems, they are complex systems. And if, when we wanna change a system, we've gotta find a leverage point that will give us the most bang for our buck in order to make sustainable change. And then last, if, um, if PE continues to, if, PE struggles to find a purpose from a lack of vision, and both the PE teacher and the principal have perceptions, and they're not looking at those perceptions, they're not addressing their mindset, then we just are, are perpetuating kind of practices that, that aren't as effective. When we're able to change the mindset and address those things, that's an opportunity for sustainable change. And we wanna look at the principal as a potential leverage point, um, and it's a really exciting opportunity. So conceptual framework here, um, what I looked at in this research was three streams of literature, and I'm going to give you like the, the 40,000 view of this, is I looked into educational socialization, so the process of teacher socialization, principal socialization, and how those two really go together. Um, I looked at the purpose of physical education, that we do have an identity struggle, and there are current barriers in the field that we need to be aware of and principals need to be aware of. Um, and then finally, the principal perceptions of PE. Uh, our mindset, as I said, is huge. So the principal is the instructional leader. Um, there are barriers that principals have for leadership, and we want to look at that acculturation experience for principals in PE. So these are just some key definitions here. Um, I will continue to find them as we go um, in the research. Big ones that I want to point out is, is we have three phases of socialization. Um, and I'm going to actually go into those deeper. If you want these key definitions, I'm happy to share um, much of this presentation with you. Uh, but for the sake of time, we're going to continue on because I'll just verbally go through these. Uh, for those of you that are very research focused, these are some key um, researchers in each of my streams of literature. And let's dig into stream one. So we have three phases of teacher socialization. And um, they are acculturation, which really um, spans from kindergarten through 12th grade when we're talking about education. The phase of acculturation uh, sociologically ranges from birth to about 12th grade. Um, next, we have professional socialization, and professional socialization begins in college. When one chooses to pursue a particular career, in this case, a PE teacher or a teacher, um, and the professional uh, socialization is where we learn kind of what it means to be a professional in the field. And then finally, we have organizational socialization, and that's when we finally get to work. And we're in the organization, we're in the school, and we're learning about 
how to operate within this school. Who are the key players? Um, how is PE valued at the school in general? Um, what is the leadership style of the principal? All of those things lead into teacher socialization. Um, in, in principal socialization, uh, they have it's the same three phases. They just span a little bit differently. So acculturation would go all the way up through and include their teaching career. Um, and then the professional socialization would begin when they begin training to become a principal. Um, and then organizational would be when they're leading their own school. Um, there's also uh, from Bush a push that uh, there's a personal socialization phase because the principal has to undergo an identity change, shifting from teacher to administrator, and that that can be really interesting. Um, so connections that we wanna talk about is that every teacher goes through this process. And so next here, I have a graphic of how I have conceptualized this research here. So we see here, the whole process is the principal socialization process. Inside this first bubble is the teacher socialization process. So for those of us that are that are teachers and we have not moved forward to that next phase of our career, um, we have gone through acculturation K-12. We've gone through our professional training um, at our universities and we are working at a school where we're learning how to function within that school. OK, when one makes the decision to move forward and become a principal, all of this becomes part of their acculturation experiences. And they begin a new professional socialization where it, uh, going through their prep program to learn how to be an administrator. This is the addition of that personal socialization process where an identity change um, occurs and um, that identity from being a teacher versus now being a principal uh, occurs and a little bit of, of, of shifting there happens. And then of course, the organizational, uh, leading their first school and building it and being a leader and building the type of school that, that one wants to build as a principal. Um, so the socialization experiences as a teacher has an influence on the phases of principal socialization because it becomes part of the acculturation process when we're looking at this full spectrum of an educator socialization process from teacher to principal. Okay, moving on to the second stream, which is looking at the purpose of PE. So uh, a couple of key things we want to talk about in our identity struggle is that the shift from No Child Left Behind to ESSA. Um, so if you haven't looked into the new legislature, this is really promising for us as PE teachers. No Child Left Behind left PE out and uh, funded only the four core subjects, math, science, history, English. Um, ESSA has language around whole child education. So that opens up a lot of funding and a lot of opportunity for PE if we take advantage of that. Uh, we also are facing an obesity epidemic in our nation. And when we're looking at that, PE often is a easy fit as a, a solution to fix that. Um, but oftentimes, and those of you who are elementary specialists know this even more so than I do as a, I'm a secondary physical education teacher. I see my kids pretty regularly. Elementary, we just don't have the time to make that sustainable change within obesity, yet on some levels we're expected to. Um, and that creates sort of an identity struggle there. And then there's the emerging research around physical literacy and what that looks like. Um, Shape America has put out that physical, physical literacy is developing the confidence and competence um, to do movement and participate in a lifetime of physical activity. And I paraphrase that, obviously, I didn't quote it directly from them. Um, but coming into this era of developing physical literacy and what does that mean and what can that look like is adding to this identity struggle as well. Current barriers, I think I'm preaching to the choir here, you all know, large class sizes, uh, generally low support, generally a lack of resources. Assessment is a huge struggle, um, especially when we have large class sizes. I know a couple of years ago, I had class sizes of 48. Um, I had a, a I think I had one period of 50. And so doing really high quality assessments with that number of kids in a 55 minute period um, was really, really challenging. And I, di I didn't, you know, I didn't do it as well as, as I wanted to. Uh, and we know that that, that creates um, an opportunity for some lower quality practices to emerge. Um, and we don't often assess um, the way that I know PE teachers that I've talked to, you know, we want to, we shoot for the moon. 
um, and we want to do these amazing things, and there's there's barriers, um, and we need to be aware of those. In our third stream, looking at the principal perceptions of PE. So um, with the principal is the instructional leader. Obviously, the principal is the head. Um, they're the driver of the vision and mission. Um, Dr. Doug Letty talks about the principal factor, right? That, that they're the key, especially um, the, the paper I read from him entitled The Principal Factor, talks about that it is the principal factor in PE, right? They're scheduling, resources, funding, um, all of those elements that impact our day to day, the principal is the leader of all of that. Um, they also value PE. So overall principals from the research that I read, they want a specialist. Um, they, they want somebody who knows what to do. So they, they want quality to happen. Um, and they, they can drive that. Um, barriers to principal leadership is there's a lot of stuff around that. It's not an academic subject. Um, we're not measured on it other than in California here where I um, teach, we do report our fitness gram scores, but nothing like happens with those, not in the same ways that our math and English scores are looked at. Um, it's not seen necessarily as essential. Um, there's also a, a barrier principles don't, don't really know. Um, in one research study uh, by Lounsbury and, and others, uh, they just don't. They lack the pedagogical content knowledge. They, they don't know what quality looks like. Um, and then some other uh, principal acculturation, moving on to the, the last part of this stream, is that there's some evidence that, <clears throat> that uh, the acculturation influences their leadership. Excuse me. And again, Referencing back to George and Kurtner Smith, who I'm in a lot of ways, I'm extending their studies. They, they were looking at principal acculturation experiences. So there is some evidence showing that there's a connection there. Um, it just hasn't been well established yet in the research. And hopefully I this research I'm conducting is adding to that. These are the three research questions that are guiding my study. So one, how do principals perceive and make meaning of their acculturation experiences in PE? What does that mean when they think back about PE in their acculturation phase, both as a K-12 um, student and through, like we talked about, acculturation spans when, uh, when you become a principal and includes teaching? Uh, question two, how do those acculturation experience influence their perceptions of PE programs? And third, how have their acculturation experiences been confirmed or denied through the various stages of socialization? In this study, there was no particular site. Um, these, it was open to any principal who holds a licensure. Um, I even had some superintendents and some coordinators for PE in their districts respond to this, uh, which is great. So lots of different perspectives. This is a timeline for my study. Um, I left this in here, obviously, as I mentioned, this is my uh, doctoral research. So this is where I've been. Um, I defended my proposal and submitted for IRB approval back in January. I was able to begin sending out surveys to participants starting in April. Um, unfortunately, right as the COVID-19 shutdown happened, which um, made things a little bit difficult to navigate here. And I'll talk about that as one of my barriers and limitations later. Um, Coming here into May, I'm right in the throes of analyzing the survey data and looking for trends and patterns. Um, and then I should be able to finish this by late summer um, and publish and uh, wrap this research up. So that is the timeline. Researcher stance. So how am I approaching this? Just so you know where I'm coming from. Um, I am a constructivist and um, so what I believe is that individuals create or interpret their reality. So meaning is derived from collecting all of these individual results. Um, I think social realities are socially constructed and that this constructivist lens helps me construct an understanding of reality from the perspective of the participants. So I'm taking their stories and constructing meaning from that. The uh, research, I'm just moving my picture here again all around. Um, the approach and rationale is um, what I'm looking at is a qualitative study. So it was a survey that I, I gave out, but they were uh, long answers. And what we're looking at is the impact of acculturation experiences on the principal leadership. Um, the qualitative approach allows those principal's experiences to be centered. Um, the specific approach is called a phenomenology. 
So what I'm looking at is the phenomenon of leading PE programs and the phenomenon of acculturation specifically related to PE. I selected phenomenology because it's that process of retelling stories that really captivated me and looking through the lived experiences because that's what acculturation is. It's the culmination of our lived experiences um, and looking at how those experiences have these long lasting effects. So our, my data collection here, as I mentioned, it was a qualitative survey that went out via email and um, participants took either on their laptops, computers, or phones. Um, and then the second piece when I'm writing up is I took my survey myself. Um, in phenomenology, it's really important to bracket out the researcher's experiences. Um, I'm bringing my own, especially as a PE teacher, especially as someone who's an advocate for this field, does a lot of work in it, feels strongly about it. I know that I'm bringing my own bias and my own background into my research. And so what I did was I took the survey myself and as I'm going through this process, I'm jotting down my own observation notes, things that strike me um, as I go to make sure I'm bracketing out my own approach and just being able to look at the participants' experiences as they, as they exist. Assumptions for this study are that all participants will answer honestly and authentically and that all participants have elected and don't have any other motives for contributing to this research. The limitations. Um, the population was definitely uh, limited by the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic is currently going on and the sample and their responses may be affected by the current stressors in education. Uh, another limitation is the authenticity. There were a few respondents that said, you know, I just don't remember. Um, so they pieced together what they could, and um, that can definitely have a, an impact on, on just kind of the overall authenticity. Uh, and then bracketing. I, I know that that's going to be a difficult piece as I continue deeper into my uh, research here. So <clears throat> knowing that that's a piece is, um, is knowing that my awareness is going to be, need to be heightened around here is a potential limitation and, and that I'm, I'm biased towards a positive stance on PE having lots of positive experiences myself um, is important to note and to uh, understand. Ethical considerations for this research, uh, that anonymity and confidentiality are paramount. Um, everything is password protected. Uh, participants completed this in a private location and they all gave their consent. They can withdraw at any time. So if anybody who took the survey says, I don't want to be part of this anymore, they can send me an email or call me and, and they can be removed. On to the fun part. What did I find? What have I found so far? Um, I received 129 valid responses. So that's a lot of data to sift through. Um, I'm currently determining a sample from those responses for my doctoral research. Uh, for this presentation, I limited the sample to look at respondents with one to five years of experience. And I chose that population because they are closest to their professional socialization as a principal and closer to their acculturation as a teacher um, therefore, my assumption here with looking at this piece is that there may be um, a, a more fresh look at those acculturation experiences, which is the focus of the research, as opposed to someone who has been serving as a principal for a longer period of time. Um, I don't know that for sure. Again, this is very preliminary findings, um, and all of this will end up being put together um, and published in my dissertation. Um, but for the, the sake of this, I limited uh, the from the 129 to 25 um, responses from principals with one to five years of experience. So here's just a little bit um, account of age. The majority of respondents were between 40 and 49 years old. Um, I had slightly more or 58% is pretty. Yeah, that's more more female respondents than males. And their teaching experience was interesting how it played out. So the majority had six to 10 years of teaching experience before coming into the class or beco becoming an administrator. Um, and then the second highest was this 16 to 20 years. So um, I, I found this just kind of interesting in the way that the graph is shaped and how much classroom experience these administrators who all have one to five years of experience as an administrator brought with them. 
themes that have emerged. Um, it seems that there are three kind of categories that respondents are falling in. They are falling into a, I'm going to make it better um, kind of mindset. They fall into a PE is the same as other subjects mindset, or they fall into the busy, happy, good um, mindset from Plastics um, research that, that as long as PE is busy, happy, good, it seems that it's okay. We need, we need to move beyond that. Um, I believe it was 1980. I, you know what I won't say for the sake of being wrong. It was definitely in the 1980s. Um, look it up. It's great research. So again, the research questions here that we looked at, and I won't read them again. We're going to uh, kind of unpack each one. So let me find a good place for my picture here. Uh, in response to question one, so how do principals make uh, perceive and make many meaning of their acculturation experiences in PE? So I separated this out into three themes um, because they this is where they really started emerging. So in under those with the make it better sort of orientation, uh, the majority of those with positive experiences who fell into a make it better kind of category really became PE teachers um, or health teachers. Uh, one was a started as sports med and then shifted, I believe, to social studies. Um, but has that foundational work around sport and, and movement education. Um, negative experiences, those with negative acculturation experiences, those with the make it better orientation, actively engaged in some sort of training, either intentionally took a college course because they knew as a multiple subject teacher they would be responsible for delivering PE, so they, they went out for that. Um, there was one principal leading at her school that, um, I'm sorry, I, I say her and they is more appropriate um, because actually I'm not 100% sure of the gender. Um, I removed that demographic data when I was looking through this research um, there. She, they decided to um, apply for a grant and bring in a PE specialist. Um, so this idea of making it better um, the other thing that I saw these make it better people doing, those that had negative acculturation experiences, that they mitigated for, for potential repeat experience. So if they felt excluded from PE, um, picked last, those types of things, their responses indicated that as they're leading their PE programs, they're looking for more inclusion. They are looking for um, really smart ways of grouping kids that don't allow students to be left out so that they're intentionally mitigating to work against the things that they they experienced. Those principles with this same as other subjects uh, type of mentality, um, their acculturation experiences were more neutral overall. They didn't have very positive or very negative memories overall. Um, things that they said consistently were that they're looking for clear objectives or learning targets, definitely the same way that they would evaluate other subjects. Um, and that they utilize really standard observation tools. So uh, being in California, lots of reference to the California standards for the teaching profession, um, or I use the same observation tool as I do for other subjects. And just their, the feeling from the responses in their survey is PE isn't different. I, I, I hold PE to the same standard as other subjects. With um, the third category of the busy, happy, good group, they had actually both positive and negative ex acculturation experiences, which I found kind of interesting. Um, their responses really were they, they're satisfied with kids having fun and it looking organized. Um, they, they definitely ensure that state mandated minutes are used, but there's nothing really special that stands out about their PE program, the way that they described it. It was, um, I want kids to smile and feel welcome and, and have fun. Um, and, and those are the responses that fell into that group. So how did they make meaning? I, I think it, it, it varied. It looked three different ways. Um, so moving on to question two here to, to add a little bit more to that. So how do those acculturation experiences influence their perceptions? And to paint this picture, what I wanted to do was to give you some, uh, some kind of descriptions of some respondents. So respondent A, I, what I found is that there's a strong connection in their responses. Um, and these are some kind of key responses that, that indicated that. So respondent A had negative experiences in PE, but was really satisfied with students being moving and happy, right? So 
it just kind of moved to that busy, happy, good. Respondent B um, shared both some positive and negative experiences. Um, one, I, I don't remember if this was the exact one, but for example, one shared that they didn't like the content, but they really liked their PE teacher. So is that both like positive and negative? Um, this respondent hated being picked last, and so they ensure that their PE teacher focuses on inclusion. Respondent C had negative experiences in PE, felt excluded because they weren't athletic, but they took a course in, P in college and teaching PE and really challenged their thinking. Um, they have a big focus on non-competitive games and maximum participation, which really goes along with that. I was an athletic, so I don't necessarily need the comp I don't want the competitive games in the PE program at the school that I lead. Respondent D had positive experiences in PE and became a PE teacher. Um, they lead PE teachers to use three to one skill feedback ratio. They use shape standards to drive instruction. Um, this respondent in particular used a lot of, of great high quality pedagogical practices in, in their responses um, that show to me that they're, they're striving to make it better and to put into practice the things that we learn our best practices um, as our research and our work continues through professional development. Question three, how have their um, acculturation experiences been confirmed or denied through the various stages of socialization? So 67% uh, of cases I determined really confirmed their experiences and 33% denied their experiences. In the confirmed category, if they had positive experiences overwhelmingly and it was confirmed, they overwhelmingly became PE teachers or engaged in training to, to improve their PE if they taught another subject. Um, again, under the ne negative experiences, their program focuses on ensuring students don't experience what they did. Um, so they <laughs> that the determination is that they had this negative experience of being excluded. Um, they had some sort of training and so it confirmed and as they're watching, they're seeing other students, youth being uh, excluded during PE. And so that's confirming their acculturation experience but then they did something about it, which is part of the other conversation. Um, those that I determined that their experience was denied, um, <clears throat> all of those respondents fall into the make it better theme, which was really interesting to see. Um, I loved this response. Um, it, this uh, respondent didn't go into detail about what harm it was. There was some talk about locker room, um, definitely some talk about exclusion, um, but the reflection is that seeing a quality program when, when this person was a teacher and what PE could look like really helped heal them from the negative acculturation experiences. So they saw the potential of what PE can be when it's done really well, um, and that helped deny their experience and see that PE can be a really amazing part to a, the educational experience of our youth. Um, some voices from the field. I just wanted to pull in some direct quotes here. Uh, this is another respondent who had a multiple subject credential, um, loved PE, played two sports, so they didn't take PE in high school, um, but talked really deeply about how their team sports um, background has helped them in their leadership. Uh, they use a high reliability schools walkthrough form and is looking for clear directions, chunking, skills-based standards, positive tone. This is one of those make it better people. Um, they reflected that P is a huge component of their school and is highly valued and protected. And that was really promising to hear. Um, and some really positive comments about the current PE teacher who's using activities, focusing on basic, basic skills, building on things, playing music, rewarding kids, all the things that we know that are amazing. And for this person, um, really increases the value of PE. This respondent um, had a music credential, De definitely disliked PE growing up. Um, I, I, this quote, I thought the teachers were mean and the activities were embarrassing. Um, what I loved about this response and why I wanted to share it here is the comment that they recognize that PE instruction has evolved. So while still taking, looking for cognitive engagement, demonstrating knowledge and skill, listening for interactions. So still not like I gather this person doesn't have that focus on the physical skill development, but they're still learning and looking for ways to make PE as, as awesome as possible. 
Um, definitely, this person also said that their teaching experience made them value PE much more than during their childhood, which is amazing. And, and I think it speaks to the power of the acculturation experience, especially when we expand that out for principals and we take it to include their teaching experience, that their, their childhood experiences can sort of be redeemed in some ways if they had a negative experience in PE, but experience a positive PE program as a teacher um, that, that can support the leadership moving up into an admin role. One more, this was someone with a PE credential, um, definitely learned about a, uh, leadership and teamwork from participation in PE and sports. Um, this second bullet point was lots of intentional focus on organized lesson design, learning outcomes, success criteria, students being held accountable for their learning, clear alignment. Um, and then this person also talked about how difficult it is to alter the perception for people outside of the content area. Um, and just that that's a lifelong purpose um, that this person has in shifting the perception of physical education, which I also feel very strongly about. And so there actually that comment right there is a great example of why my bracketing technique um, is going to be really important as I continue to share and, and look into this research. Um, I just in, interjected my own experience in here as well. Um, and it's this working on uh, representing the um, experiences of participants. Uh, so conclusions from this. Responses support the research that has been done on PE teachers. Our acculturation experiences influence our teaching and our leadership. And so that's really important to consider as, as we all move up through education, whatever our field is. The quality or the feeling of the PE program someone experienced as a child and then also as a teacher definitely has an impact on how they lead their PE program. So that acculturation experience is huge. Um, and then finally, that their experiences confirm their acculturation experiences, but in a lot of different ways. Um, some strove to make their PE programs better, like we talked about, this make it better mentality. Some just kind of let it be. That's the busy, happy, good group that if, if it's happening and no one's getting hurt, we're going to just move forward with it. And then some became PE teachers, and they're really supporting um, the quality of their PE programs. Um, there's lots of different ways that this manifested. But they, um, they, uh, their acculturation experiences are, are confirmed. So limitations of this study and what we're looking at here is that this study was conducted amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, my survey went out <laughs> on the Friday that it was announced that schools in California would be closed for the rest of the school year. Um, originally, and then I, I, I ended up expanding my um, survey window uh, another two weeks beyond that, just because I knew my sample was, you know, dealing with a lot. Um, this survey was a long survey. Uh, so those who decided to take the 30 plus minutes to respond to this survey may have a, a bias towards this. Um, so there were definitely a lot of former PE teachers, health teachers that responded, um, which I expected it, especially as it being a PE, a study on PE. Um, they, a lot of these people had positive experiences in PE. So 70% of response of, of the respondents in this sample so far reported um, positive experiences in K-12 PE. And uh, so those that had negative may not have even wanted to take the survey at all. Um, and then the other thing is I, I know there were a lot of doctoral students, either current or uh, those that have graduated from programs that took the research just because they know how difficult it can be. Um, and that is a potential skew and limitation to this, to this research as well. Impl implications for this research. So, uh, just as a reminder, these are preliminary findings. Um, they may shift and adjust as I continue to do research on the sample myself. But what I do know is that there's further research that needs to be conducted on the acculturation experiences of principals. There are two studies that I know of for sure. Um, and I would be interested in seeing research on other content areas. Um, the two studies I've seen are on PE. And I would wonder if there's similar things in math or science or multiple subjects. Recommendations, PE teachers, 
spend time reflecting on your experiences in PE. Um, definitely understand that not everyone had a great experience. I think we know that. And I think sometimes, I know I forget it sometimes. Um, number two, seek professional development. Stay on top of current trends. Deliver the highest quality programming that you can. Expand your PLN. Um, if you're here, uh, you probably are involved with Fizetagogy. Um, if you're not on Twitter, get on there. It's It's been a game changer for me, for sure, and I highly recommend it. Uh, meet with your principal regularly. Share the best practices in PE and what you're working on in the PE department. If they don't know what's happening and they don't know what to look for, um, they're not going to know how to support you. And then finally, invite them to your classroom. Give them specific elements of your teaching to observe. This was something I did this year with my admin. I said, I want you to look at time spent in activity. So start and stop your watch. I want to know, how, am I getting to that at least 50% mark in my classroom? And she was more than happy to come in with a stopwatch and do that for me and gave me that, that really good data back so I could, I could adjust and coach my team. Uh, I did that, I'm the department chair, so I did that with all of my PE teachers and we got, we got some great data. If you're a principal, um, again, spend time reflecting on your experiences in PE. My research is showing that those experiences carry over. Um, and especially if you had a negative experience, um, ask yourself if those experiences influence how you lead the PE program at your site. Do you leave it to be busy, happy, good? If it's not causing you problems, you kind of don't think twice about it. Um, but that's important. That's important to look at. Uh, seek professional development in PE. Join free conferences. If you're here, I'm so proud of you. Thank you for checking out PE and for joining us. Uh, third, meet with your PE teacher regularly. Ask about the goals of their program. Hold them accountable. Have them think through these things. And then utilize evaluation tools. One of my favorites is Shape America's Physical Education Teacher Performance Evaluation, which is something you can download through them. Um, I'd be happy to share the link with you if you're interested. But I use that um, as a department chair and with my principal to have conversations all the time. Be professionals. Reflect on your own experiences. You have acculturation experiences that are affecting your leadership as well if we can extend this research out farther and make some predictions. Um, I would definitely encourage students to reflect on their experiences, spend time thinking through what PE was like for them and what they're bringing to their classroom when they become teachers. Uh, teach a comprehensive curriculum that focuses on all aspects of PE program, not just a sport focus, using things like teaching games for understanding, um, health-related fitness, all of the good things that I know many of you PE professionals are doing. I know my program did, um, and it's really important. Encourage PE teachers to seek lifelong learning and remain current on their best practices. Things are changing. New things are coming out. You all know this, and attending conferences like this is really important. And then train PE teachers to advocate for their programs. I wish I had gotten some clear training on this. I've had to learn it on my own. Um, but giving them tools to have the conversations with their principals, to talk to their department chairs when they get out of school site and they see things that they want to change or talk about or improve upon, how can they advocate for their position and what they think and know is best in the field. And then finally, these are just some very key references that influence the research referenced here and the background here. If you are interested in a complete list of my references, I can share them. Um, I did not want to put that here because it is pages and pages long. Thank you so much. Please reach out with any questions or inquiries. I'm going to stick around for a little while in the chat and we can continue the conversation. Um, you can email me at justsaygope at gmail.com. Same handle on Twitter, just say go. And on Instagram, it's more student focused. So if you want to see what I push out to my students um, and some school related stuff, you can follow me on Instagram at Mrs. Heidel underscore MLKPE. I'm very grateful for your time this morning, and I hope you learned something. Um, and I'm excited to continue the conversation with anyone who wants to stick around. Thank you. Bye.